Mathematics is really important for your JE mains because it is used in physical chemistry, it is used in physics, it is used everywhere. If you suck at mathematics, you suck at problem solving. And if you suck at problem solving, you will suffer in your career. To make you god of mathematics, I have Prabdeep Singh and I have Aditya Gosain who cracked their JE mains mathematics with the percentiles as you can see over here. So without any further ado, let's start this video. Let's go. Maths in JE is a memory game. By this, I mean that if you have solved a similar type of question, then you will be easily able to solve it in the JE exam. But if you have not solved it, then it will take you 10 to 15 minutes to crack the concept, to understand it and to apply it to answer the question. From previous past three years, we can easily understand that maths is going on a tougher side as compared to physics and chemistry. But it is not a negative point because more the tougher the maths part, easily we can score a higher percentile on a low marks. Let's move to some of the common mistakes made by the students while preparing for JE in maths. Most people will just try to learn the chapters with high weightage, but I will never suggest that as these chapters may be interlinked with any other topic. So we are going to share a list of topics and the proper sequence of learning them. But before that, let's categorize ourselves into these three groups. Groups. So, the first category is the underconfident category. Students which score nearly 10 to 30 marks in their mock test or the students which are just going to begin their preparation for the JE maths fall under this category. I would suggest them to start with the topics or chapters which are not interlinked with any chapter. For example, matrices, determinants or sequence and series. You can make a timetable and blindly follow it to understand more and more concepts. You should solve more and more questions from these chapters. Most of the students make a common mistake that they neglect solving NCRT and directly jump to other books and they do not understand the importance of the NCRT. I would rather suggest them to solve the NCRT questions, firstly build their concepts, understand each and every concept and then move to higher order problem. Now let's move to the another category. In the second category, the mildly confident category, the students who score 30 to 50 marks in their mock tests fall under this category. These students should understand their strengths and weaknesses and work on them. To do this, they would need to write as many mock tests as possible and review on the mistakes. On the strengths, they would need to keep revising and on the weaknesses, they would need to solve as many problems as possible so they can understand the pattern of the question. An example of this, during my preparation, as I was good in calculus, I solved many problems on it and I kept revising. This helped me gain accuracy and speed. Some of my weaknesses were probability and coordinate geometry. To overcome these challenges, I started visualizing every problem and making graphs even though I knew the answers. This helped solidify my concepts of circles, locus, and hyperbola. And for probability, I had realized that I had to start from the basics, which were PNC. So I worked on that and gradually increased the difficulty of the questions. Solving high number of questions for probability is very important as there are very less variations of questions and it's easy to understand the pattern of questions. So moving on to the third and last category. So the third category is the confident category. Students will score nearly 60 to 70 marks or more than this in their mock test fall under this category. If you are already in this category, that means you have uh, understand the basics of that uh, particular chapters and you want to move to the harder questions or level up your game. For that, I would rather suggest to solve PYQs or you should solve uh, start solving a particular higher order books which have higher order of questions. For that, I would suggest the Singage book. While solving the question, you should try to test your knowledge by changing certain scenarios in the question. For example, if you are solving a particular integration question, you should rather uh, try to change the e raised to power x value with a raised to power x or sin x and you should try to solve it and check the answer later. For solving particular types of question in mock test, you should try to fo follow the three pass strategy. For the students which do not know the three pass strategy, it is as follow. In first pass, you should try to solve the easy level questions in a less than a minute time. In the second pass, you should try to solve the medium level questions, which will take certain more time as compared to the first pass. In the third pass, there are hard questions in which you can give the remaining time and solve them because they are very time consuming questions. By this strategy, you will be easily able to manage your time in the JE exam and also you should start following this in mock test as it will help you to practice this strategy again and again. So now let's answer the most asked question that how to prepare for the JE exam in remaining time. To help you prepare, we have created a three month study schedule. For the first month, you have to complete all high weightage chapters and build on your basics. To do this, you would solve as many problems as possible. In the second month, you would focus on revision. And to do this, you would solve previous year questions and increase the frequency of solving mock tests. In the third month, you would focus on mock tests and revise the weak areas. In this month, it is crucial to revise formulas and important results regularly. So now let's move on to how to revise. Revision. Revision is very crucial when you are preparing for a JE exam because while you are revising things again and again you will be easily able to understand and re remember them for a long go 
then revision is also very crucial when you move to the last month or last two to three weeks before your JE exam date. In the last two to three weeks, I will suggest some of the tips that I used to follow and you should also follow to score good marks. The first tip is that you should maintain a formula notebook where should you where you will be writing all the formulas, tricks and the theorems. You should try to implement the tricks and theorems while you are solving different questions and revise and write the formulas after you are done with all the solving questions in a particular day. Each and every day you should write the formulas again and again to practice them. The next tip is that you should not be uh, learning anything new or revising anything weak that you are in in the last two to three weeks as it will only worsen your condition because if you are not able to solve questions you will have a mental impact and you will not be able to prepare well and rather than the last two to three weeks you should be refining all the concepts that you are very strong in and revising them again and again so there is a golden tip also that we will be discussing now on so the three golden tips that you must be following while preparing for je exam not for maths but for the all three subjects are as follows the first one you must start solving pyqs and giving mock tests when i was preparing for je last year i used to solve a lot of pyqs and mock tests in the last two to three weeks as it helped me to gain more and more confidence and to understand and manage time efficiently during my je preparation and during the je exam the second tip is that you must start solving each and every section of the JE exam for example chemistry, physics and maths in 30 to 40 minutes. Easily help you to maintain the time during the JE exam and it will also increase your question solving skills. The third and the final tip is that you must analyze your mistakes from the previous PYQs or mock tests that you have given or solved. For example, if you have committed certain mistakes in the last PYQs or certain mistakes in the mock test that you have given, you must analyze it, why the mistake has happened, what concept you have applied, what, what is the wrong in that concept and you should start solving more and more questions of that type of questions and if that comes in the G exam, you will not be able to solve it. <laughs> बोली नहीं रफ्शी ट्रेडिशन नहीं बोली यार बोल दो यार वो तो इम्पोर्टेंट है सो वाइल यू आर स्टडिंग फॉर द जेई और व्हेन यू आर गिविंग द जेई एग्जाम यू शुड एनालाइज योर रफ्शी डेट यू मस्ट एंटर द क्वेश्चन नंबर वाइल यू आर सॉल्विंग फॉर एग्जांपल इफ यू आर सॉल्विंग अ पर्टिकुलर क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम as if you return back to question and you are not able to solve it, you should continue from the calculation that you have done before. If I am not able to solve the first question, I will move ahead and come back to that question after that and I will continue the calculation that I have done. It will easily save my lot of time and it will help me. So that's all. Thank you. So this is all about the God of Mathematics. Now it's your time to write down all the tips and strategies that have been shared in this video on a paper or stick it somewhere on the wall on your study room or elsewhere and start following them and if you have any further request or any feedback or any suggestions and if you are watching until this very end please do comment in the comment section share your honest feedbacks also comment we have watched till the end and to help you out we are sharing the study materials and some other resources in the description below so you can go check it out and also join our telegram group so that you can chat with your seniors toppers or rankers of j2024 and if you're really passionate about computer science i would also like you to check out scalar school of technology and with that let's close this video thanks for watching